but rather than just do it, uh, <clears throat> tell you about it later, if I can, I'll probably do this video in a couple of parts. I'm going to show you how to change the caps. These are the new caps I got. This uh, came curled over pretty heavily like that in the package. I'm not going to play with that. I'm only going to bend it as much as I need to when I need to bend it. Uh, the less you bend from that little point, the better, because that's exactly where the freaking caps leak from. All right, these are the caps on my amp. The first thing we did is remove the can. Second thing uh, is very, very important is I discharged the caps. I made this thing with a uh, resistor. I think it's a one watt. Uh, I don't remember uh, what the measurement is. But you don't need the resistor. You can short it straight. It'll make a little bit of an arc. Uh, it's a little unsafe, but you can do it straight with a jumper like this. It's fine. So the next thing I did, and I'm try to hold this camera here with one hand. The next thing I did was I put, of course that wasn't touching the amp at the time, on the positive end, and I found where this little weld was on the amp here, because it's very raw metal there, and I just, you know, and I basically did that to each one, being very careful not to uh, shock myself. Then I used my multimeter on volts of direct current to test it and make sure each one was dead. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and unscrewed each of these turrets, these standoffs, and uh, I removed my phase inverter tube. Uh, if you don't know how to remove a tube safely, uh, you're probably not advanced enough to even try this. So yeah, you need to know how to remove your tubes. You do it in a very gentle circular motion. You don't want to yank the tube out of there. This is the phase inverter tube. Uh, and I believe this was my reverb send and return, which are both 12AX7s, but I set them here in order. I'm going to put them back in the same order that they came out. It probably doesn't matter but for the reverb, but tubes do burn in differently. Uh, okay, so now the reason I took these out was so that I could lay this over like this when it's time so that I can unsolder the traces. First I've gone ahead and cut these as close to the board as I can. Uh, you know, a couple of them are good. I'm going to save them. I can always put a, a, a little more length on them uh, with a jumper or something later if I want to use them. But these two particularly are bad. And right at the end, you're not going to be able to see it on the camera there, but they've blistered out exactly where I told you. Where the lead comes out, they blistered. And I noticed my tone was depleting and you know my amps overall uh, recovery or, or strength was depleted and when uh, my friend was helping me rebias for these nice RCA tubes I put in here we happened to notice that the caps were uh, you know he took the, the can off and he looked at the caps and he saw that they were bubbled so that's why I'm doing this okay so now what they've got here is every one of them is hot in a bed of hot glue hot rubbery glue in between each other so you have to take them off very carefully. It's a real pain in the butt. But uh, the hot glue actually reduces vibration so that when you're playing your amp loudly, your your capacitors aren't rattling together making extra vibration noises. Um, so, okay, so when you're unsoldering this, you want to be really uncareful, uh, really uncareful, unsoldering uncarefully, not to uh, destroy the trace, because this is a circuit board here. And... Um, what I'm using too, this is a very cool tool, it's called, and I'm using my can here to hold the solder that comes out of it. You push down on that, and when the solder gets hot, and it sucks the solder. It's a solder sucker, and it's really extra cool. And that is a technical term for it. So you want to do that to remove the solder. I'm only going to have this little teeny piece of metal left in there uh, to remove because I've cut all these. And I'll pull them out. Okay. Well, when I get the uh, the new ones back in, oh, and I guess I should mention to you, every one of these has a positive end. You really need to pay attention that you're putting them in the correct direction. Uh, if you don't, you can have a real explosion. Okay, uh, I'll put them in, and then uh, I'm going to put this back on the charger again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll come back and show you more. Now, here's an interesting thing uh, I thought I'd mention to you. I'm going to go ahead and leave the, it actually feels like silicon, I think it's uh, like silicone caulk. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there, and I'm going to embed my new caps right into it, 
and uh, if I need to add a little after the fact, I will. I'm not going to peel this off of here. Now, these two were good. These were not. You can, yeah, I can see those in the video there, in the monitor, so I know you can see them. See all that orange pus coming out of there? These two were on their way out, and they're depleted, and they're not working efficiently, which, uh, if you let them go too long, could take out other components in the amp. Um, they're your filtering capacitors, which uh, make what comes out of the wall uh, balanced and even to go to all the circuit, to all your tubes. So you could really take out, you could probably take out a transformer, you could take out some tubes. You really want to make sure you have good caps. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there. Um, I just wanted to change, you know, the, the really large uh, filtering stage caps. And I'm going to do that. And then I will come back. Okay, so now I've taken all these off and I cut them close. So all I have is these little pieces of wire to get out of here. And uh, when I, I'll put these in and then I'll come back. Okay. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to show you. Uh, this solder sucker works very well. When when you depress the tip, let's see if you can see that. See that tongue that comes out of there? That pushes what solder you sucked out of it. And uh, I'm putting it here in this pan for now. Some of it falls here on the amp. And you want to be very careful to pick it all up. Don't let it fall in the, uh, the tube sockets. Basically, it's a piece of metal rolling around in your amp waiting to connect something to uh, explode it. Here's actually the crust that came out. I'm off the capacitors that we're going to take that out of there too. Not that that's going to be conductive. But all right, now when you put these in, you don't want to fold this over directly at a, a hard 90 degree angle from the end of the of the uh, capacitor. You want to roll it over gently at the wire, not at the knuckle where it comes out. Uh, and the reason for that is because, you know, you could cause a leak. So don't do that. Okay? All right. I'll come back and video more in a minute. Okay, now in this case, I've got one that's bent just about how I need it. And this one bends up in the complete different direction. The last thing I'm going to want to do is roll this around and twist it. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, which one is it now? This is my positive and this one is good how it is. Nice, nice arc on it make a little knuckle there you know a little support and bend it never twist it around in a circle to get it in the direction you want okay and what you can see I'm doing here is I'm putting them through and I'm pressing them down tight into the silicone that was there I'm gonna leave that and uh, I'll add a couple drops in between them afterwards and uh, even with my pliers I grab very gently on the other end and I give it a little teeny tug to make sure it's down tight and I hold it down tight and I bend it up again trying not to ha uh, create a hard bend at the place where it comes out of the capacitor. Okay. Alright, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, these are my 22's, I'm going to put my 47 in. Now the other thing I've done, uh, these were 450 volts, I've changed them for 500 volts, which is completely fine. What 500 means is that is the maximum that it can handle at a time. Up to 500 volts you're fine. Uh, the microfarads are uh, 47 in this stage, 22 in these other stages, and you can change them for anything. You never really want to go lower, uh, reason being the specs are to make the amp sound like it does. Uh, if you go lower, it's probably going to be muddier. If you go higher, um, it's going to clean up a lot, but sometimes an amp that's real clean uh, sounds like shit, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, you want the amp to have a nice... That's the reason you're playing a tube amp. If you want perfection, uh, play a solid state amp uh, and it will recover everything that your guitar puts through immediately. You want sag, you want compression, you want distortion. That's why you play tube amps. They're warm, they're creamy. Uh, so to clean up a tube amp almost to the point where it sounds solid state, uh, you know, unless you're playing jazz and your ear is just that good, uh, you know, I would, I would say stay within the parameters of the amp within reason. Um, 
In other words, this is a 47. If I change it to an 80, it's going to clean up my base end. These are my mids and, and uh, my highs, and they're all at 22. Uh, I could change them uh, to whatever I want also. And the higher the rating, the cleaner it's going to filter. And the cleaner it filters, the cleaner my sound is going to be. Uh, I don't necessarily want the cleanest tone. So I'm just going with what the amp had in it, because it did sound pretty good as it was. My bottom end was a little flabby, but I'm going to say that that's the speaker. Uh, because I have the stock speaker, uh, it's a little bit on the papery side. Uh, it's not a very warm speaker, but uh, the more I break it in, the better it sounds, and that's true. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up, and then I'll fold this over. I'll solder these in. I'll cut them short, and uh, we'll come back and I'll show you what to do. Okay, um, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but I've gone ahead and soldered this one. Uh, I'll remind you of what uh, any person who does this will tell you is you heat the work then apply the solder you don't apply solder to cold work because the solder will not bond to the work the metal the trace whatever it happens to be you want to heat it up first and then add the solder uh, so that you get a nice bond alright so I don't know how good you can see that there but as you can see I've done a decent soldering job. Everything's soldered in there very neatly. And I kept the silicone that was underneath these. And it gives them a very nice bed. And as I said, I'll probably take some hot glue or some silicone and put a bead in between each one of them myself. And then the last thing I do before I put this back on is I'm going to make sure there's no and I'm going to make sure I empty that out real good before I put it back on. Uh, make sure there's no metal flakes, droppings of solder. Make sure nothing got into the the uh, tube sockets. You don't want pieces of metal rolling around in your amplifier. And there I have it all. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, and I'll come back. Okay, while I was waiting for my glue gun to heat up, I put in the uh, tubes. I put them back in, made sure they were in there good. I put the can back up on the phase inverter tube. Uh, I may put the cans back on these, but as my friend Ken had been pointing out to me, uh, and it's true, an amp sounds very different without the cans on the tubes. Uh, if you have a very microphonic tube or a tube that's very prone to radio interference or electrical interference, uh, then you know the can is a good thing to have on there, but uh, you're adding another whole thing. You're you're creating a, a you know another piece of metal around something that makes your sound. Everything in this amp affects your sound. Some things uh, probably aren't going to be uh, audible to many ears, uh, but as my ears got better, I could hear where this amp could use some better tubes than it had. And I've got some really nice RCAs there, which my friend got out of an old church that used them for their organs uh, which is beautiful they were brand new in the box uh, 1960s RCA uh, I guess they're called gray, gray plates and they sound good I could immediately hear how the amp sounded rounder so if you're looking to clean up your amp uh, you know all this boutique stuff is not going to clean up your amp it's going to make it sound more like an amp if you want a perfectly clean amp, uh, you need to go real high wattage or uh, solid state, you know. These tubes, these RCAs actually made my amp sound rounder and more compressed, with like more like a Vox, which I really, I really liked uh, that compression that they added. Okay, so now my, my gun is probably heated up. High temperature mini glue gun. And I'm going to go ahead and put... All right. I've put glue in between all of them, so they're a nice cohesive unit. They're not going to vibrate, and you have to use high temperature glue if you're going to do that. Uh, they used silicone. I left the bedding in there, and I pressed them in tightly to the bedding, which is nice. Nice rubber feel there. Uh, you have to use high temperature because these things get hot, and if you use low temperature glue, it's going to melt all over the place and make a problem. I know, and if you know this uh, from your own experience, 
when you're playing your amp and you're close micing it and you've got vibrations coming out of every possible facet for instance this was vibrating so we put washers on here because the screws weren't screwing down tightly uh, trying to find vibrations in your amp is really annoying so as unbeautiful as that looks it's extremely functional I might take this amp over to Ken's house and bring it up slowly he has a bulb uh, a bulb resistor uh, device that he built to bring these up to charge slowly I'm going to give him a phone call and see what he says about that. Uh, I know friends who changed their caps and didn't bring them up slowly and they were fine and they had a long life. Um, they're still running today. So I'm going to give him a call and see if we can put this amp back together here and take it over to Ken's house. Put it on the, uh, you know, the voltage resistor which will bring these caps up to charge very slowly. And then uh, try it out and see if it doesn't explode or if it plays nice uh, you know we'll find out I know I've got all my positives to my positive side I did it how it's supposed to be uh, if you do the same and you don't destroy the traces when you solder it should be fine I'll give you a video of this after it's done and we'll see how it sounds I have a feeling uh, it's either going to sound very good or explode so I'll let you know <laughs> but it's gonna sound great alright All right. I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to go over to my buddy Ken's house. One last important, very, very important uh, tip is uh, get yourself a workbench because uh, this freaking hurts. Okay, so we're going to go fix it up, and when I get it running, I'll take a video of it, and you'll be charmed, I'm sure. And then this... Uh, jangle box here. I'm going to box it up and take it over to Ken. I may be trading him for a uh, road-worn Stratocaster neck, which I need a neck because I have a Strat without a neck because I sold a neck. So uh, I'm going to bring that jangle box and see if Ken likes it and trades me for his neck. Skin off of the back of his neck. Alright, so anyway, that's my final advice. Get a, a damned workbench, you fool. Alright, the amp is uh, brought up to speed and running. I traded Ken my Jangle Box for a road-worn Stratocaster neck. Uh, good trade. He's happy. I'm happy. Into the straight side. Uh, volume is almost 5. Treble is on 4. And bass is on 6. Same setting. My bi comp on the Ross side uh, and my King of Tone on the clean side. You can see why these are my favorite pedals. <laughs> 